Thanks for checking out this week's podcast from Center Street Church. We pray it blesses, encourages, and inspires you. Immediately following the service this morning, at 12.15 on the south lawn of our church, south, not sure where that is in here, but on the south lawn of our church, we're going to be having a baptismal service. Tonight at 6 o'clock, immediately following our service at 6 o'clock on the south lawn of the church, we're having a baptismal service. There's somebody here this morning, you love the Lord Jesus, you've made that commitment, but you haven't been baptized. I have a surprise for you. Today, you are going to be baptized. There is, there is no question about it today. You thought it would be a day like any other, a Sunday like any other, wrong. It's going to be the day of your baptism because your Savior, the Lord Jesus, has asked you to be baptized and with joy on the south lawn under God's big blue sky. You're going to be baptized. Some of you are watching from our regionals. We have regionals all over the city. And uh, you're going to talk to your lead pastor because you're a Christian. You haven't been baptized. And when you talk to him, you are going to be baptized ASAP. And there are people all over the world watching online, other parts of the world or the country. You're going to find a group of Christians. And soon and very soon, you are going to be baptized. Praise the Lord. This is going to be a great Sunday. Do not, yes, pause. Do not rush away following the service. You're going to head right to the south. Where is it? Somebody tell me where south is. Okay, that way. That, yeah. There it is. And uh, it's going to thrill your heart. It's going to thrill your heart. In our previous two services, we've had people who have uh, come forward, and that is exactly what they want to do. So I want to talk to you about baptism. The first baptism I ever did was 37 years ago. David Phillips was a brand new Christian, and I was thrilled when he asked me to baptize him. So we went down into the mighty Shushwap Lake, and I said, David, do you love the Lord Jesus with all of your heart and with great conviction? He said, I do. Well, then I said, David, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I laid him into the water with a strong arm, and I started to bring him up. There was only one problem. I noticed that the tip of Dave's nose did not go under the water. And in that millisecond, I had to decide, is David really baptized if the tip of his nose does not go under the water? And I concluded that no, if the nose doesn't go under, he's not baptized, so I had put him back under. (laughs) I'm not making this up. The problem was David already had taken a breath when he had come up the first time. (laughs) And the... uh, well, the day of David's baptism was almost the day of his death. <laughs> and he, he said to me later on, why did you do that? <laughs> but I want you to know that I have really lightened up uh, 37 years later. In fact, it was just last year that my very good friend, Jeff Lachelt, uh, wa- came to me and he wanted to be baptized. Jeff was battling cancer, and through that crisis... The crisis of cancer, he had made a new commitment to the Lord Jesus and he wanted to be baptized. Problem was, he had a port, I think about here somewhere, and uh, through which he received his cancer treatments, and that port could not get wet. What to do? Well, we 66% baptized, uh, <laughs> baptized Jeff. His legs went under the water, a good portion of his torso, and you know, the side of his head went under. But, but this third of his body didn't get wet, and we were thrilled about that. And we had lunch recently, and Jeff said, when are you going to baptize the other 33% of me? <laughs> but it's all good. Uh, but like Dave and Jeff, I simply want to ask you, have you been baptized? Today is the day. Today it's time. I don't want to talk to you this morning so much about why you should be baptized or how and when and all the details. I want to talk to you about what you may experience 
when you are baptized. And I want us to look at the life of, or the baptism rather, of the Lord Jesus and see what he experienced. So everybody stand. We're going to read the story of Jesus' baptism together. Come on, stretch a little bit. Get some exercise. And um, let's read together, following me. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. You may be seated. The baptism of Jesus. Question, why was Jesus baptized? Ever thought about that? Why was Jesus baptized when John was doing his baptisms, this guy that one that you know, ate locusts and wild honey and he wore a, a camel skin, really a funny kind of fellow. He was in the wilderness baptizing. Um, his baptism, listen, was a baptism unto repentance. In other words, people were turning to God, and as a sign and symbol that they were turning to God, they were baptized. Newsflash, extra, extra, read all about it. Jesus did not need to repent. He was the perfect son of God. He did not need to be baptized by John. So why was he baptized? Well, Christian baptism, as you know, is a picture. It's a picture of our old life. We are buried in the water. And then when we are brought up out of the water, it's a picture of our new life in Christ. The Warren life is dead. The Gene life is dead. The Larry life is dead. The Mike life is dead. And our life is in Christ. The old life, the new life. Christian baptism Newsflash, newsflash, extra, extra, read all about it. The Lord Jesus did not need to transition from an old life to a new life. So why was he baptized? Even John, this guy who eats locusts and wild honey and wears this, this camel skin, doesn't think it's a good idea. You'll remember in the passage which we just read, uh, he says that, um, it says that, he, that, that, that John tried to deter. Remember that word, deter, Jesus from being baptized. That word is very interesting because it's in the continuous tense. And it's a strong word saying that John was actually quite insistent that he not baptize Jesus. Jesus, you do not need me to baptize you. You don't need to get baptized. You're the sinless son of God, the savior of the world. You need to baptize me, but I cannot baptize you. He's very, very adamant that Jesus doesn't need to be baptized. But Jesus says, come on, John, come on, just do it. And then Jesus says, this is to fulfill all righteousness. Or roughly translated, John, you need to do this because it's the right thing to do. People have said that, you know, Jesus was baptized because it was the start of his ministry, and so he needed to be baptized to launch his ministry. Who ever heard of that, that you were baptized to launch a ministry? Other people have said, you know, well, there were all these Jewish um, rituals, and he, need to be, he needed certification, you know, to go in the ministry, and the religious people uh, would have wanted him to be certified just to give him extra credibility, but that doesn't make sense because... The religious people of the day hated John, the guy in camel's uh, gear and eating locusts and wild honey. They thought he was a kook. They would have never accepted that as kind of a credentialing. There was only one reason why Jesus was baptized. 
Jesus was baptized as an example for you and I to be baptized. In other words, he is saying, you follow me as Savior and Lord, now follow me in baptism. Come on. He goes down into the water, and if it, it's, it's as if he is saying, come on, Michael. Come on, Fred. Andrea, Jessica, Angela, come on. Follow me. Follow me. You have claimed that I am your Lord. You have said you would. Now, now follow me in baptism. Show it. Your, your response to me was very private in the privacy of your heart. Reenact DBR. Reenact the fact that I died for you and was buried and rose again. Be laid in the water. Simple your new life. Come on, follow me. Follow me. The early Christians understood that. One day Peter is preaching and uh, can you believe this? 3,000 people. Don't you love seeing people come to know the Lord? Doesn't that thrill your soul? And on this particular day, 3,000 people find Jesus, or, or better yet, Jesus finds them. They follow Jesus as Lord and Savior, and that very same day they follow him in baptism. I love the story in Acts chapter 8 about a, an Ethiopian, a precious Ethiopian man. He's searching. He's searching for something in his life. And finally, he discovers the Lord Jesus, and he is thrilled beyond words, and he makes that great commitment to follow Jesus as Lord. And that very same day, he's riding around in his chariot, and he sees a marsh. He sees a marsh, and he says, I should be baptized. And his friend Philip puts him under. In chapter 9, we read about a guy named Saul. He hates Christians. He kills Christians. But God loved him. And through a long process, I think many of you know the story, he follows Jesus as Lord, and that very same day, or a few days later, excuse me, he follows Jesus in baptism. In chapter 10, we read about a very religious man. His name is Cornelius. Religious people need people to need Jesus too, right? Religious people need Jesus. I sometimes say Christians need Jesus too. We all need Jesus. He was lost and he didn't even know it. But one day, somebody told him about the Lord Jesus. And he made that commitment together with his wife and together with the children. It is so spectacular when families love the Lord Jesus and when they come together and they follow him as Lord and Savior and that very same day, they follow Jesus in baptism. I love chapter 16 because there we meet a woman named Lydia, a seller of purple fabric. She comes to know the Lord Jesus and follow him as Lord and that very same day, she and her family are all baptized. Also in that chapter, there's a, a guard, a prison guard, who's having a bad day. You know you're having a bad day when all your prisoners escape. <laughs> but through the crisis, and how often it is that way, through the crisis, the Lord Jesus comes to us, and we accept him as our Lord, and we follow him. And this guard, that very night, gathered the children together, his wife and family, and they, they thought about that. They turned to the Lord, and that very night they followed him in baptism. That's what Christians have always done through 2,000 years of church history in every corner of the world, in all of the epochs of time, the last 2,000 years, Christians have believed and they've been baptized. Except in the last 30 or 40 years in North America and in Western Europe. Christians have become rather ho-hum about baptism. Oh, it's important to receive him as Lord and follow him as Lord. But I'm kind of busy, you know. Or, uh, I don't know about that. Or, I, I, I don't like getting my, my hair wet in front of people. I don't like getting no water up my nose. 
I think I'll leave that baptism. Can you do that? Did you know that there are Christians all around the world today? I think of Christians in North Nigeria, Christians in many Islamic countries, Christians in Asia. They think that baptism is so important, they're paying a great price to be baptized. In many of these countries, it's okay to say you're a Christian, to say you believe in Jesus, but when you get baptized, that's a game changer. People get very angry. And there are Christians today as we speak who decide that baptism is so important that when they get baptized, they lose their jobs, they lose their families, they get beat up. There are some Christians today who pay with their lives because they not choose to become a Christian, but because they choose to be baptized. There are Christians today who are dying to be baptized. We've read recently about Muslim extremists who killed Christians when they were baptized, and I want to know, because Muslim extremists know that it's important to be baptized. And I want to know why Muslim extremists have a better theology of baptism than a lot of Christians do. We've become ho-hum. We, 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 we're distracted. I know that it's a, it's a public thing and people are shy. I know that I know that um, you can get water up your nose, but if you hum, hmm, you can't get water up your nose. There are some of you sitting here, you should get, you no, know, you can get, come back tonight at 11, or after the 6 o'clock service and be baptized. I think it would be great if there are some of you that decide I'm going to do it after, after the service today. I didn't come with a change of clothes. I'm going to drive home with a wet bottom. You can take a towel home with you. People are dying to be baptized. It's a thrill and an honor, regardless of the cost. It won't cost you anything to believe and be baptized. You should think about that. I don't want to make anybody feel guilty today, so I don't think you should get baptized because of what I've just said now. I think you should get baptized because of what I'm going to say right now. I want to inspire you to get baptized, and I want to do so by telling you what's going to happen to you when you're baptized today. And I'm going to tell you from the baptism of Jesus. Jesus goes down into the water, and John, after he calms down, and after Jesus calms him down, and when John agrees to baptize him, he lays him in the water and brings him back up. Do you see the water dripping off of Jesus' long hair and the water dripping off of his beard? Can you see the smile on his face? And then all of a sudden, something happens. <laughs> so, something happens. There's a dove circling above. And there's this strong, authoritative, powerful, and yet gentle, loving voice that says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Would you have loved to have seen that, heard that? And I wonder how Jesus experienced that, how he felt. He felt an incredible connection with his heavenly Father through the Holy Spirit. His heart would have leapt within him. And I want to tell you that people, and those of you who have been baptized remember this, and if you are baptized today, you are going to experience an incredible connection with your heavenly Father. Yes, you will. And I'm going to prove that to you right now. 
I want you to look at some pictures of people who were just baptized recently here at Center Street Church and see the joy and see that they have indeed connected with their Heavenly Father. Look at this fellow here. <laughs> sure, yes. My friends, the joy of the Holy Spirit, he is connecting with his Heavenly Father in his baptism. Oh, he had his old life. He was laid in the water. My friends there brought him up out of the water, a picture of his new life in Christ. Joy. Next slide, please. <laughs> sure. Sure. Do you, uh, do you think that's choreographed? Do you think that this fella decided that, you know, when I come out, I'm going to throw my hands up? No. No. It was an instantaneous response to the Holy Spirit. Joy, connection at his baptism. Next slide, please. <laughs> this fellow, this fellow is doing tech. He's, in, he's back there. See the, turn around, see those, there, he's waving. Turn around, everybody turn around, wave, wave. There he's waving at you. Yeah, wave back, sure. Joy, Kevin. Wasn't Kevin just up here? Yeah, Kevin was just up here. Joy, next slide, please. I want you to listen to me, folks. Sometimes there's great joy in the face and the uplifted hands, and sometimes they're just tears. Sometimes they're just tears. Next slide, please. See, not only is the person being baptized happy, but the baptizers and the whole community, the whole, con there's joy, isn't there? When You're not going to leave. Are you kidding me? You're not going to leave as soon as the service is over. You're going to go to the South Lawn because you don't want to miss, something exciting is going to happen. You, you can't miss it. The dinner will wait. The fr you'll be a few minutes late for your friends. you got to see this, man. People connecting with their Savior. And my friend Jay is, oh, look at this one. Oh, just feast your eyes on that. That is the sermon in a picture. Baptism is not something you do. Do not be sitting here saying, well, you know, this is kind of getting to me. I wonder if maybe I will drive home wet. Uh, maybe, maybe this is something I should do. No, 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 no. Baptism is not something you do, it's something you experience. Is spending time with someone you love or doing something special for that precious someone in your life something you do? No, it's something you experience. It's joy. It's the Holy Spirit. You can be baptized a thousand times and not be a Christian, but when Baptism follows the, your lordship to the, your commitment to the lordship of Jesus Christ. It's an experience beyond words. You see, I think it works this way. When we, when we accept the Lord Jesus, it's kind of a transaction. It's kind of a commitment we make, right? When I was 11 years old, I accepted the Lord, and it was kind of a miserable time, to be honest with you. I was crying. I wanted to go to heaven with my family, and I had this long list of sins that 11-year-old had committed, you know, and I remember, you know, it was kind of a sad thing. <laughs> ah, but when I was baptized, that was my connection. Every commitment needs a connection, and I think that's why Jesus asked us to be baptized. And this fella attends our church. I love him to pieces. Next slide, please. Yeah, joy. Next slide. Uh-oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's wrong with this picture? She's, she's, she's dry. There's, there's some dry there. It doesn't matter. It's all good. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Next slide. I married Pat's daughter, married, uh, performed the ceremony for her daughter last year, and what a change in her life. And final, final shot, please. Oh, yeah, the joy of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, thank you. Connection, that's what, it happened to the Lord Jesus, connection with the Heavenly Father, 
Socrates said that words are stupid things at epical moments of life, and I have no words to describe. I have no words to describe what happens when you take this step of obedience. Tonight at 11 o'clock, well, that's wrong. Do not come here tonight at 11 o'clock. After the service, <laughs> after the service to today, it's okay to go home wet. If you want to go home, get some clothes and come back tonight, you can do that. You follow your heart on that. On July the 13th, I had an accident. I lost a third of my finger. <laughs> Ouch, did that hurt. Who would have thought that gardening could have been so dangerous? <laughs> On my way to the hospital, I was, uh, I was in shock. It was shocking to see, you know, my finger, part of my finger missing and another part of it laying on the ice. And, but I went to the emergency and they bandaged it all up and did what they had to do. And on the way home, I wasn't sh shocked. I was kind of in trauma because I realized what had happened to me. I was worried about my piano playing and my typing. I'm a really good typer. And I was really worried about my golf grip, you know? <laughs> so I was pretty traumatized, and it hit me pretty hard. Um, but as we neared home, Leanne said something uh, that kind of helped me. She said, well, Warren, uh, at least you'll be like Pastor Henry. And uh, if you don't know our pastor, if you're visiting with us, our pastor has nine fingers. And, and that, you know, that helped me when she said that, because I love Pastor Henry. I felt a connection with him in that moment. You know, he's a man of God. <laughs> yeah. He, um, I have so much, he, he's done what almost no one else has ever done, you know, in, in, in growing a church, and it's all been by the Holy Spirit, but by his gifts. He's a, Pastor Henry saved my ministry. I don't know if you know that or not, that story, but he saved my ministry, and I, I love him so much, and I felt a connection with him. Well, I did something you should never do. I called him on his private line on his holiday. And uh, I told him uh, what had happened, and he gave me some very, very good pastoral care. And he, um, he said to me, um, well, Warren, as we terminated the conversation, welcome to the club. <laughs> I am in Pastor Henry's club. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I told you... Um, I told you that this happened on July the 13th. Well, that was Leanne's and mine, the 18th anniversary of our engagement. We were going to have a hot date that night. And instead of a hot date, we were in the emergency unit of the foothills. And, but through that whole experience, uh, Leanne would wash my hands and she would change my bandages. I couldn't even, my hand was so touch sensitive, I couldn't even put on my socks. And, and so we spent so much extra time together. She took some time off of work and we had a reconnection. A wonderful, wonderful reconnection and closeness that we hadn't had maybe in a, in a while. You know how it goes in marriage, but it was a, a, a precious, precious time. It's important for us to connect in our relationships with people. But my friends, it is so important that we have connection with the Lord Jesus. Our faith is not really about what we believe. The essence of our faith is not so much what we do. The essence of our faith is not so much what we don't do. Believing is important and doing and not doing, I guess. But the core of our faith is connecting with the Lord Jesus every day. And that's what's important, connecting with him. Are you saying, Warren, that if I don't get baptized, I can't connect with the Lord Jesus? Absolutely not. He loves you so much. He smiles on you every day. He takes delight in you. But why wouldn't you take this? He's always connecting with you. Take this opportunity to connect with him and be baptized. 12 o'clock, we're done. Oops, I have three finalies. Three finalies. Finally, number one. 
Some of you are sitting here and you're saying, well, I was baptized when I was baby, a baby. Uh, what about that, Pastor Warren? We at Center Street Church trust the Holy Spirit in this, in this matter. We are a church from, I would guess, 50, 60, 70 different denominations. We have people from every corner of the world, and Christians have different view, views on baptism. Um, if in your spirit, your, bat, your child baptism, when you were baptized as a child, if that satisfies you, I have only one thing to say to you. God bless you. We trust the Holy Spirit in these matters, yes. But there's some of you, there's some of you who say, you know, that was a precious thing when I was baptized as a baby, but it was an indication of the faith of my parents. I had Christian parents and they cared, and they cared about me and my baptism as a baby was precious because of that. But you know, now that I'm an adult, I want to exercise my own faith. I want to I wanna have my own experience uh, of baptism and so I want to be baptized again. And you're just doubly blessed. That's all there is, just doubly blessed. You follow the Lord on that. Here's the second, finally. Uh, I want to teach you to baptize. Because you don't need a pastor to baptize someone. If you are a follower of the Lord Jesus, you can do the baptize. I'm going to teach you how to do that. You grab them. <laughs> and you, you, you find a lake, a pond, a stream, a river, an ocean, a bog if there's enough water in it, a marsh, a bathtub, a hot tub. You, you find water and you grab them and you... you, you <laughs> Under, under, under. You, you, just, you, just, you just grab them, and, and, and in that place, you just, you, you, down. <laughs> Have them say a statement of, their, of the lordship of Jesus. Have them say, Jesus is my Lord. Maybe use the Trinitarian doxology, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah, you should probably put that in there. But that's all. A, a statement that Jesus is their Lord uh, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then just down, under, push, lay underneath. So there's not no, anybody here who couldn't do that if you yourself are a Christ follower. Here's the finally, finally. The finally, finally is that some of you here should not be baptized. Because as of yet, you haven't given your heart to the Lord Jesus. There's an order here. Believe and then be baptized. So I want to teach you how you would receive the Lord Jesus. Very, very easy. Three words. I'm sorry. Please. And thank you. Is that all, Pastor Warren? Essentially, yeah. I'm sorry. Please. And thank you. I'm sorry that I've lived my life independently from you. You see, people are often messed up. They're so worried about sins. Sins are not your problem. Sin is the problem. Sins are the symptoms. Sin is the root. And there's only one sin, people. Religious people are so concerned about all of these different sins. There's only one sin. My independence from God. My turning my back from God and going my way. And so you say, I'm sorry for living my life independently from you. Please, please come into my life and forgive me of my sin. Thank you for hearing my prayer and making me a new person. I will follow you with all of my heart. And you can pray that right now. Right now. Maybe you came to church. Maybe somebody brought you. Maybe you don't even want to be here. But something has happened to you right now. And you could become a Christian right now. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for living my life independently from you. Please come into my life. Forgive my sin. Thank you for hearing my prayer. 
I will follow you all the days of my life. And you could conceivably be baptized after the 11 o'clock service right now or tonight after the 6 o'clock service. So let's just all, we're, we're done. I have no more finalies. Uh, let's just all bow in prayer. And I just want to talk to you for a moment. If you would like to be baptized, there's a connection corner. I'm going to head right over there right now. There's a connection corner. There's not going to be a prayer altar here this morning. We're all going to the connection corner if you want to be baptized. The rest of you do not leave. Well, some of you will have to, but it'll be too exciting. You're the kind of a person that's always missing out on a good time. Come on, stay. And in about 10 or 15 minutes, we're just going to begin. It'll be fun to be all, you know, thousands of us gathered on that lawn. The gardener is going to hate us, but it's okay. And we'll just watch people being baptized one after the other. Uh, so if you'd like to be baptized, head to the Connection Corner. Lord Jesus, we've been reminded that faith alone saves. Faith alone saves. But the faith that saves is not alone. We need to believe and be baptized. I pray you'll speak to people's hearts and guide them accordingly. This is not the pastor's work or the church's work. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. So Lord Jesus, lead as you will. Amen. Thanks for listening. We hope this message has impacted you. We'd like to challenge you to take it one step further and get connected. For any questions or prayer, please visit our website at cschurch.ca. You can also like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter.